the last video lecture, brought up the idea of what we call tax incidents or the burden of taxation. And the idea with tax incidents or the burden of taxation is answering the question, who really pays the tax? We know that if we tax sellers, they'll attempt to go ahead and pass that tax along to the buyers. And we know that if we tax buyers, that will decrease their demand and that will impact the equilibrium price. So what exactly determines who really suffers what portion of the economic harm from the tax? In our previous example, in the last video segment, we saw that the effective price paid by the buyers was $3.30, no matter who was taxed, and the effective price the sellers got to keep was $2.80, no matter who was taxed. So, notice that relative to the equilibrium price of $3, the buyers were always $0.30 cents worse off because they always paid $3.30. And the sellers were always $0.20 cents worse off because they only got to keep $2.80 instead of $3. And notice that these two numbers add up to $0.50, cents, which was the overall size of the tax. And this is always going to be true. The economic harm suffered by the buyers plus the economic harm suffered by the sellers has to add up to the overall size of the tax. And it's almost never split exactly equally, just like it isn't split exactly equally in this case. <clears throat> One thing we want to notice here is that the tax levied on the buyers and the tax levied on the sellers were totally equivalent. There might be some small issues of administrative convenience who it would be easier to actually collect the tax from, but aside from that, taxes on buyers and taxes on sellers are pretty much the same. And because of that, from now on, we're usually going to model taxes as just driving a wedge between the price that the buyers pay and the price that the sellers get to keep. And we won't really worry anymore about exactly who the tax is being imposed upon, because it doesn't really matter. So, this raises the question, what does determine the tax incidence? What does determine who bears what portion of the burden of the tax? And what we'll see in the next couple of slides here is that if we have very elastic supply, or very flat supply, and a very steep or inelastic demand curve, then sellers are going to bear a small burden of tax and buyers are going to bear most of the burden. If we reverse the relative elasticities, then we're going to reverse the relative burdens of the tax. So graphically, again, we think of the tax as driving a wedge between the price buyers pay and the price sellers get to keep. And you can see, kind of, if you started sliding a wedge between these two, because the demand curve is steeper, you'd start sliding up faster than you'd start sliding down on the supply curve. So in this case, again, with a steep or inelastic demand curve and a flattish or elastic supply curve, it's the demand curve, the buyers, that suffers the majority, but not all, of the burden of the tax. On the other side of things, if we have a steep supply curve, inelastic supply, and a relatively flat demand curve, elastic demand, then as we start sliding this wedge between these two, we're going to slide down the supply curve faster than we slide up the demand curve. So we're going to have the majority of the burden resting on the sellers and less of it on the buyers. So, just to repeat it here, relative elasticity determines tax incidence, and the tax burden falls more heavily on the side of the market that is less elastic. And the intuition here is that when someone has inelastic supply or demand, that means that they're not price sensitive. That is, they're going to go through with their transaction more or less with re without regard to price. So when the tax is established, that kind of opens up renegotiations between buyers and sellers. And someone who's not going to walk away 
doesn't have very much bargaining power. So the people who are committed to going through with the transaction, regardless of the price, are pretty much going to get the short end of the stick when it comes to figuring out who's going to bear what portion of the burden of the tax. There are a couple of, there's a review question here, just to make sure we lock down that understanding, and then we'll go on to our next video segment.